Attention aspiring musicians of all levels from all over the world. Want to learn to play guitar or bass like your heroes? Well, I have the guy for you. Multi-instrumentalist Corey Glazer has played with Fastball, Paula Nelson, Skyrocket, me, and many more. In fact, his song Needle Hits the Groove is our theme song. Corey's been teaching for over two decades and is now offering his services all over the world via Zoom. So if you want to learn rock, country, R&B, or funk, folk, or jazz on guitar or bass, just go to CoreyGlazer.com or follow the link in the text of this podcast and start shredding on guitar or slapping the bass like a pro with Corey Glazer at CoreyGlazer.com. Let's get down. Hey gang, you ever been sitting around with your guitar trying to figure out a song, maybe by ear or maybe by memory, but you just can't quite get it? Well, I have the app for you. Whether you're a professional musician or a beginner, Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app for you. For just $2.99, you get the chords and tabs on guitar, bass, or ukulele for over a million songs. All available at your fingertips. You also get tools like a tuner, metronome, chord library, lessons, videos, and more. Just go to ultimateguitar.com or download the app from your app store and start playing today. That's Ultimate Ultimate guitar. Let's get down. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? It's time for How Did I Get Here? Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. How are you doing? I hope you guys are all being healthy, sane, and safe. Yeah, you got to stay safe out there, man. The numbers are going up. Uh, You know, it's getting crazy out there. It's just crazy. There's like a level of craziness now that we're dealing with that that you even thought like a a month ago. Oh, it's not going to be that crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's that crazy. And it gets crazier. So yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys feel bombarded by just insanity coming at you all the time like I do between the news and social media and trying to find out what's happening in the world and what's going to happen and the numbers are going up and you know what I mean? Like there's just like this stress level. I find myself going for walks a lot. I find myself uh, listening to music that I loved when I was a kid more (laughs) than I normally do. You know what I mean? Do you do that? Are you doing comfort stuff? Like how many times have you watched The Office or 30 Rock, or some favorite show of yours, Frasier, Cheers, whatever it might be. Some kind of sitcom from another time when the problems were different. People had problems, but they just weren't like a pandemic and insane political stuff and, and social upheaval and, and just general insanity everywhere. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know what you do to stay sane, but I do what I can. I go walking, I listen to music, I try and talk to friends on the phone, you know? Try and do that. Try and stay connected. Call family members. Tell them I said hello. Today's my sister Tasha's birthday. I called her. Did a video chat with her. Sang her happy birthday on my ukulele. I love her. She's fantastic. She's 26 today, man. My little sister is one of my little sisters is 26. I have three little sisters. Gang, I have an amazing show for you today. Matt Noveski from Blue October is my guest on the show. He's also the owner of the Orb Recording Studio. Now he has a brand new band called Icarus Bell with my dear friend and old bandmate, Alan Adams. You guys might know him as Alski. He's part of the crew with with Blue October. But Blue October has a brand new album. It's called This Is What I Live For. Just came out in October. Fantastic record. Fantastic. And uh, they also put out this this documentary called Get Back Up. I want to thank my friend Keeve Spare for sending me that. A Triumph of the Human Spirit. It's a film by Nori Niven. Fantastic, fantastic movie. Fantastic story. You know, it really is a triumph of the human spirit. And this band has managed to stay together for so long now. You know, Matt and I talk all about it. We talk about uh, what's going on with with the Orb Recording Studios, who all he's been working with in the studio, and also, of course, his brand new project, Icarus Bell which you can find on Patreon. They have a Patreon page, and they're putting out videos all the time, and they have music that they made. You're actually, actually going to hear some music on here. And I actually saw that they've gotten some radio spins on The Buzz in Houston. So congratulations to Matt and Alan from Icarus Bell. 
Blue October, and of course, Orb Recording Studios. You can find uh, Icarus Bell at IcarusBellOfficial.com, and you can find their Patreon page. Sign up and get involved. Matt and I have a, Matt and I have been friends for a long time. All right, we've uh, we've done shows together, we've hung out together, and it was great to catch up with him on Zoom. I miss seeing his face in real life. I miss playing music with him, and hopefully, we'll all be able to do this again soon. But for now, please enjoy my conversation with the amazingly talented bass player from Blue October. And founding member of the band Icarus Bell, and of course, Orb Recording Studio owner, my dear old friend, Matt Noveski. Let's get down. all good in the hood. how uh how are you holding up during this time you were saying the studio has been busy there's been a lot of people well having people recording seems like crazy. it's going well yeah. well everybody needs to stay busy man right you know it's like if, if you if you're not i'm gonna stop eating that's so gross <laughs> i can hear every little thing happening in my mouth if you're not if you're not staying if you're not staying busy and you're not staying creative then you're like you're just falling behind at this point you know sure. it's like some of the greatest music of all time is going to come out of this whole situation i really i believe that you know so so everybody like we've had this crazy influx of people reaching out and everybody's like i mean we're booked solid like this is the best it's, it's kind of weird to say and i feel a little like cautious saying it because i, I don't want to sound like we're being irresponsible of course we're definitely you know like we're not even letting interns come in yeah being very clean but you know long days being diligent cleaning and everything but We've been so busy. That's great. It's crazy. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. As f- I, I understand the thing about, uh, I've been having these flashes lately, though, and I'll be honest, about staying yeah. busy. And this is a time really to be the most creative you can. And I've been creative. I've been able to do some writing and, and recording and stuff. And uh, But there is this sense of like, in all honesty, of kind of like whatever the keyboard player in the band on the Titanic <laughs> was feeling right. like, it. hey guys, keep on playing. I heard there's a great guy here that books that books this club in New York. Keep on playing. It's it's gonna be fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Probably. You, you you just put it into words better than anyone has been able to since March. Um, yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Thank yeah, you. Like, yeah, it's true, man. I mean, it's you know, but but what's the alternative? You know, it's, that's right. I guess, that's exactly right. Like you're you're gonna sit in the thing anyway. Band. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well you know? be playing. You might as well be playing. You might as well be doing what you love to do and enjoying yourself, man. Yeah. So, so, so this, we'll see. Uh, the new Blue October single is awesome. My oh my. When yeah, did you guys? Uh, when did you guys record this record? Did you have to do it? Oh, we actually worked on the record at the very end of last year into the beginning of this year. Oh, okay. And so, so we we had this whole like kind of funny it's going back to what you were saying a minute ago we had this whole like this is going to be our year right 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 <laughs> like 2020 is our year yeah, man yeah. like you know, well, our documentary's coming out our new album's coming out which is we think is phenomenal like we're, we're we're getting all this love and and then like the you know the ship sinks so but we're still moving forward with our plans we're still releasing the album the documentary came out in april you know um but the album we we're recording at the end of last year into the beginning of this year. And it's nice because Justin has his own studio right out in back of his house. Okay. You know, so we don't, so making a record, there's no, like the clock's not ticking. It's not like, you know, like, Oh, we got, we got to get it done. You know, like when I'm making records, you know, usually here at Orb, it's like, we, we have till 10 o'clock tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and we're done. Yeah. So yeah. there's no, like, there's no pressure as far as that goes. So it takes a lot of that off and it becomes a lot like just more organic as far as making the record and, you know, it's like we'll we'll do normal dad days, like we'll be done at five o'clock, you know, and and which is still weird to me, but it works. So so we did that and then we finished the record at the very beginning of this year, just in time to go tour in the spring. Right. You know, so the record was like all the finishing touches were going on at like February, mm-hmm. you know, into March. Yeah. And then yeah. um and then we were on the first day of the tour and 
the governor went on TV and Oh, you were on the first day? <laughs> we we had done all of our pre-pro. We flew the whole crew in. We were all like the buses were packed, like we were rehearsed, we were oh, ready to go. Shit. We we went and and it was it was weird because like we right when everything like you probably remember like the minute that you realize like the shit starting to hit the fan, right? Yeah. Like Okay, wait a minute. This is because I actually was in Germany in February doing another record. I was producing a record and all and I kept hearing all these things. And my wife was texting me like, hey, this looks kind of weird. It's getting bad here. And I got on the flight and some couple people had masks. And I was like, okay, this maybe this is a bigger deal. And I think it is. And then I get home. We rehearse. We bring the crew in. We do three days of pre-production and every day of pre-production, I would go home and the news would get more grip. Right. So I would go to I would go rehearse. I would go home, have dinner with my family, turn on the news, and then it was like more people at the podium. <laughs> like every night, it was right, like right, the right. group got bigger, you know. <laughs> yeah. and it was like, okay, maybe this really isn't going to happen. Now there's you know? specialists and, coming on too, and everything. You're yeah. like, oh shit! <laughs> Everybody looks a little more tired every day, every day, you know. But but we I, honestly, we had a. I would say that we had a really good feeling that it was going to get called off the day before we left. But we were like, we're here, we're ready, you know, let's just see what happens. And we went to Beaumont, which fortunately isn't that far, but we went to Beaumont, we were ready to load in. Like the, the, the bus is backed up to the venue, you know, like the door's locked, it's ready to open. And we went inside and they put the news on the big screen for us. And the governor came out and basically said, shut down. And we got news that day that Live Nation was pulling the plug and we went, okay, we're going home. That's it. Wow. Crazy. Man, yeah. that must also just be like a logistical nightmare for Paul Nugent, your manager, because. I don't mean to laugh. No, I, I mean, it's Paul funny, Nugent, but, but it's, like, it's like, shit, it, man, that's a big machine. Oh, and it God, was not it's like so. the slingshot was back and just ready to go. Oh, man. And, and you know, I just feel so bad. Like, I'm, I'm laughing out of just complete sure. exhaustion. Like, I feel so bad for him because that happens. And then not only that, and this is what a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people don't think about this, right, is <clears throat> then you go, okay, like in the early stages of the pandemic, it's, okay, well, we're going to cancel this leg of the tour. We have to reschedule all of these dates. Right, right. So let's right. reschedule them for three months down the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Paul, every single day is now going, okay, I got now I have to get with our booking agent and push these dates back. I still got to prepare for the next leg. Okay, now that's getting canceled. Now I have to reschedule those dates. And I have to, and and it was just this constant vicious cycle of like, what do we do? Like, is this even possible? And then finally, it really just got to a point where it was like, we're just chasing our tail. You know, it's like, nobody knows when this is actually going to happen. Like, it's obviously not going to be until early next year that we're realistically going to be playing in front of any kind of a, a crowd, you know, so... Just do what we have to do. And then and then I think that gave him at least a little bit of a breath, you know, to just yeah. go, okay, stop. And, you know, let's focus on some other some other avenues until we know what's up. That's um, that is an insane story. I I wish you guys luck and hope that it, you guys have done some live stream stuff, right? I've seen the ads for we, it. Yeah, we have. We did two and they were actually phenomenal, man. We had a we did one in July, at the end of July, and Justin is um Justin's like the king of social media. So he's like constantly interacting with people. Right, and he's always right. um, like a couple times a week, he's doing stuff online and he's very, very active with it. I, I commend him for it. He's really good at it. So he's been really busy and he's done a couple concerts as well, like just solo acoustic concerts. But then we did this one in July and it was kind of like, well, is it like, what's this going to be like? You know, it's like, let's, let's just jump in, you know, to the deep end and just see if we can swim, you know, and, and it went, it was unbelievable like it exceeded all of our expectations That's awesome. i thought it was phenomenal you know the production was really top notch we did it at uh studios at fisher um in fisher texas okay yeah um like full you know production sure. film studio in a sound like, stage and everything sound stage every uh, all you know the whole the whole nine yards so we didn't we didn't cut any corners on that and it, and it went really well so we decided to do it again so we did another one this last weekend and we did our whole foiled album in entirety, which was kind of interesting because some of the songs we haven't even ever played right, right, live. Right. So it was like, oh, I actually have to rehearse. Um, 
and that went really well, you know? Was, so I think, I think every couple of months we'll, we'll keep doing it. Yeah. Are you, you're managing bands. You so I, of- I, uh, that word scares the living yeah. shit out of me, honestly, like just from past experience, like I, I would say that I'm, I'm managing artists, but I'm doing artist development. Okay. You know, okay. so, so I, by saying that, that a lot, that gives me a free pass to focus on the fun stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then yeah. Go, right. Right. Oh, shows, you know, uh, social media, all that stuff. No, that ain't my department. Right. You know, like. I get to focus on the fun stuff, but I am doing a ton of artist development. In fact, I'm really kind of doing it full time right now, which has been, I can't even begin to tell you how fortunate I am that that's all pl- kind of played out the way that it has with everything happening. Yeah. I actually got a phone, I actually got a phone call about doing this with this company in Nashville that I've started working with the day before our tour got canceled. Oh, wow. I was on my way down to rehearsals and I got a phone call and it was like, Hey, we'd like to start an Austin division and we'd like you to, to head it up. And it, you know, right then I was like, Oh, I don't know if I'll have time. Right. <laughs> the next day I was like, Hey, <laughs> I have time. Is that job still open? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Let's do it. So uh, is yeah. that, is that similar to what you were doing? I heard some stuff you did with Dossie. Yeah. She's so amazing, man. I, I'm just such a fan of hers, you know, I don't like I, my friend Evan is working with her full time and Evan's the one that introduced me to her a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she had already been playing live and had songs and everything. And she, you know, she had a a fan base for sure. She'd already kind of put a, put a foundation together, but, but Evan and I started to really kind of dive in and try to take her up to the next level, you know, like, well, let's, let's grow this. And, um, and man, she is so easy to work with just because she's so, she's one of those rare, she's like you, like she's very creative and very artistic, yeah. but she's yeah. also very, has a great business sense yeah. and is very yeah. like, she has her shit together, yeah. you know? So it's like most artists I know, like they're, they're, yeah, they're one or the other, right, you know, right, they're right. like right. super creative and it's like, yeah, I'll meet you at noon right. and, and or they, they don't, don't show up. up. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's like a great um she's a really good blend of both yeah and uh so she's easy to work with it's easy for me you know but i've let i've lent a hand in writing and production and some development stuff with her she's been doing a ton of stuff here at orb she's actually going to do a live thing up here pretty soon oh awesome um, yeah i'm just kind of part of her family i'm mm-hmm. like a i'm like a i'm like the uncle i'm like yeah. the drunk uncle in her family. <laughs> drunk uncle matt drunk uncle matt yeah um, for the f- who else have you been working with on that level, like um, on a creative way? Man, I've been doing a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm working – well, this company in Nashville is called BCG that I'm working with, and that's primarily younger artists. Like, we're working with, like – I actually just worked with this girl, and when I started working with her, she was 11. 11? 11 years old. What, what she's would writing you, um, Sorry, just real did, quick. When you were yeah. 11, when I was 11 – was, people I, had to tell I, me to wash my hair and shit like yeah, i was no, not in the I, zone where anyone was bringing me into a studio <laughs> to man, be professional I, I i could not like i agree with you 100 percent. and like to even like it, it sounds funny to me to even just say it to hear it come out of my mouth like but this girl is awesome yeah. and she writes her own songs and she's like She's so she's also like, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the the, uh, the people that I work with PCG are like between like 15 and 20. Uh-huh. So they're kind of uh-huh. like at that stage where it's like, OK, my parents don't really embarrass me anymore. Right. You know, like, yeah, I can be a part of this. Yeah. But she is like it's funny with her because she's very like mom, dad, be quiet. I got this, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, hey, stop talking. I got this. I All know right. what I'm doing, you know. And she's awesome, man. And she's a country singer. And she's like, uh, she reminds me of Dolly Parton. It's wow. crazy. Like, How old is she now? now? 12 or 13. Okay. She might be 13 now, actually. Um, but she's phenomenal, man. So, And there's, there's a few artists that I've been working with through PCG. Kat Whitlock is one of those artists. I've worked with her for quite a while. Um, Kat's super cool. She's got this just like, she reminds me a lot of Haley Williams from Paramore. Mm-hmm. Um and that's all been great, but I've I've been making some records that I'm really proud of lately too. I, I worked with this, uh, I did that record in Germany with this actually yeah, a Scottish guy, 
James McKenzie. Okay. He's a Scottish guy who lives in Nuremberg, Germany. Okay. And his whole band is German. And they're all just ridiculously talented and phenomenal. And that was such a cool experience. Um, James is great. I'm super excited about that. He, he's actually going to be releasing a song very soon. I just got word about it today. So I think next week we're going to, we're just going to announce that. And then, um, and there's a young guy here in Austin named Elijah Delgado and Elijah, we did an EP, Matt Melly and I did an EP with him and he's got just like hundreds of thousands of streams already uh, wow. on this EP and he's killing it. He's doing, he's actually, I've gotten a lot of other work like this girl, Grace Sorensen, who's phenomenal. Some other artists have actually reached out to me because of Elijah. So that's been one of those kind of bridge. Yeah. I mean, you know, as a producer, when you get work because of something right, you did. Right. Yeah. So Elijah is like, I, he, I need to thank him because he's gotten me a ton of work just from that that record. Like, I Am Dynamite, it was kind of the same thing. It was like that record came out and I had a bunch of people reach out because they liked that record. I'm kind of getting that same thing again with Elijah, which is great. Right. And did, did you work with them as a manager or just as producer with I Am Dynamite? I did, yeah. Um, well, the thing with them was like, I worked with them just as producer at first and they kept going through managers. Yeah. And I just got tired of like the whole rat race, you know, like just kind of watching this like vicious cycle of. And they were probably coming to you anyway in like a mentor yeah. kind of way. And you're doing yeah. manager stuff probably. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. I was, I was kind of big brother, you know, like big little brother. And, um, and so that we had a lot of trust and, and we had a really good relationship. So when I finally just went, you know, I think that you need to talk to our manager you need to come talk to Paul. And actually, I've done that a few times. Like, Tori Vasquez, same thing. Ivory Tribe, same thing. But with I'm Dynamite, it was like, I, I think that Paul and Swin would get it. You know, I think they would. Yeah. And they loved, they loved them. And so they just, like, as soon as they brought them into the fold, they we got to go make that first. We got to go make Super Mega Fantastic, which is the record that did really well. And... And it was like kind of off to the races after that. Like everything just fell into place. It was great. So I, I got to I got to co-manage them with Paul and Swin. Um, but really again, I'm not like I'm not a day to day, like I'm gonna right, help you right. play the tour. Like, man, I, I can't do that. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I get to do the fun the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, creative stuff. Yeah. I wonder it seems like a management team like that would be really awesome to have like guys that cover the different bases. Yeah, well, I mean, a full service management company, you know, yeah. that's kind of what it is, you know, it's it's like, and I mean, I don't, I, being a manager today is not really the same thing that it was no. 10 or 15 years ago, you know, it's it's a different role, no. it's a different world, you know, Yeah, for sure, I mean, people like Scooter Braun, you know, it's like you look at people like that and it's like right. they have, they've kind of paved the way for like, let's rethink what a manager's role really is, yeah. you know, like, you know, Scooter Braun steps in with an artist and he like if he feels like that artist needs five years before that album's gonna come out, he's going to put a plan together that's very much like an A and R record label plan. And it's not necessarily I'm your day to day manager. It's much more of a creative big picture thing. Right. That brings up oh, a great I conversation because it seems like the the job of A and R over the last fifteen years. Yeah. And and that has been relegated to oh it's been privatized. Right. Like the, yeah. the company that you're working with, yeah. people like the Austin Music Foundation and the stuff I do there is A&R stuff. You're developing an artist. It, it is. And it's been and I'm, I'm actually really glad that it's been privatized, but it's been privatized really because record labels kind of just effed it all up. You know, like they I, I feel like I personally feel like record labels really dropped the ball when it came to A&R. And it came to the people that they were putting in a &R positions. I mean, back in the day, it was songwriters. It was other artists. It was right. producers. It right. was, and then all of a sudden it was, well, this guy has a business mm -hmm. degree. Let's make him head of A&R. And let's, you know, and it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, like the early 2000s, you know, when, when the, the boy bands and Britney and all that like really exploded. That's when things really started to change. Yeah. As far as record labels approach and their a and r system and it just was, fell apart i was just talking about that yesterday with somebody i was like in that <laughs> that fall of 1999 yeah was the peak of what sales could be when there was that two week or three week period that backstreet boys and uh in sync put out records like a week apart 
And those yeah. records for like a month sold a million a week, which was unheard of at that time. It's crazy. And then yeah, exactly. all of a sudden, it just seems like it ate itself. Like it the totally industry. Did, I, you know, I remember this. Uh, I don't remember if it was if it was like a Rolling Stone article or what it was, but I remember Perry Farrell giving this very like like kind of cryptic warning that that's what was going to happen. Like I remember Perry just basically saying, "Hey, just be prepared for the fallout." You yeah. know, like you see, you see that, like, oh, there, there's this like we can package and market this new brand and this new product and put all these songs together, and all these kids are going to love it. And but be prepared, yeah, like be prepared for what that's going to do to the music industry. And he was absolutely right about that. You know, yeah. Well, when you're working with the, with a young and developing artist, do you the the focus like like uh, even even at the time say 2005 or 2006 where you and I and Ryan did these acoustic shows together and we go to Dallas yeah. and stuff like that weren't those the days man? those were the days man but the yeah. fucking thing is is that there was this paradigm shift with like social media and with like streaming technology where all of a sudden our artists are fucking PR machines yeah. And it seems a little dangerous when you're talking to your artists about like the difference between a band and a brand or something. Like there's I mean, I've 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 talked to musicians that go like, "Yeah, that doesn't really go with my brand." I'm like, not to sound like an old guy, but like fuck yeah. fuck I never even well, thought it, about that in my life. It, it's kind of ridiculous, man, you know? Like for for some people, it's more about the brand than it is the band. And if that's the case, then in a weird way, it kind of makes sense to me. Right. Like, okay, it's more about your brand. Like, that's really what you're... But the, the thing to me is, like, as a, as a as an artist, as a musical, you know, I'm trying to get out there and become a brand, or I'm trying to, you know, become a well-known, established artist. Right. Your assets are your songs. Yeah. And the thing that I keep seeing, and this is what I preach when I do artist development, and this is, I think, what may be different about my version of artist development than some other people's is there's a huge emphasis on the brand with me. There's not, there's an emphasis on your songs. Yeah. Like, because those are your assets and like, I don't care, you know, how, how good looking you are. I don't care how great your voice is. I don't give a shit about any of that. If you don't have compelling, great songs that are unique and you have a story and there's something unique about you, nobody needs another Billie Eilish. Nobody needs another Lord. Nobody needs, you know, a, like that. We don't need those things. And some of those copycats will have some some success. It will happen. They'll come and go, but there won't be careers, you know. So like long lasting careers for younger artists today need to be about originality and about having something strong to say that's unique and 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 like identifiable. Like a, a unique voice is better than a good voice, right? Always, right? You know, like. And, and so to me, I think that that's what like I'm trying to preach and that's what I'm trying to instill in some of these kids. Like, but there, but I do see what you're saying. And I see a lot of gray area with like, you know, like p placing the importance of, you know, Instagram over the strength of songs, which to me is like, no, 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 no. Stop. Yeah. You know, just stop for a second. Or planning stop your, worrying about all this. Shit. Right. Planning your PR campaign before you made a record. Yeah. Like those kind of things. I see that a lot. Like, you know, I, I, I see a lot. Yeah. I see it from the inside out a lot. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, Johnny, I don't see that changing anytime soon. I don't Because all, all social media is doing is reinforcing that idea. Yeah. You know, it's, it's scary. Yeah. You know, but the, I do see people and there's, there's people that do give me hope as an old guy for the next generation is somebody like a Sarah Dossie who can handle yeah. all of that stuff like a, like a millennial can, but then yeah. also has badass songs, is a badass musician, yeah. works on an artistic level where she knows there's nothing to, you have to have something to talk about before you talk about stuff. For sure, man. And that's why like people like her need to be mentoring and teaching younger kids, yeah. you know, like people like, well, people like us and people like Paco Estrada and Casey McPherson. And like those, those to me are like, that's my crew. And that those are the people that I, that I, I look up to and I trust and I reach out to when it comes to these things, because I think that they get that. I think that they understand that, but they also realize like kind of have a duty to teach 
the next generation of artists and musicians. And totally. I kind of have a duty to, 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 to sort of raise them the right way and to mentor them that like, hey, um, I know that you, you get inundated with all this information and you see this all the time, but take a step back and focus on your songs. Like yeah. focus on what makes you special. If that takes three years, then so be it. You know, but let's let's worry about those things. You yeah, know? we have we have a responsibility. Yeah, we do. We totally yeah. do. So, uh, speaking of new music, you also have new music, Icarus Bell. Yeah, man. Yeah, those I, uh, tunes are really good, man. You sound great singing. It's great to hear you on there. I I hate my voice. I really do, and I don't say that in a in like a. Oh, I don't. I really don't like my voice. Tell me it's good. I yeah, want to yeah. hear it's good. Like I, I really genuinely hate hearing my voice, and it's not that I don't think I can't pull it off because I know I can pull it off. I've done it. Yeah, yeah. But like I, I've heard like live stuff back from like back in the A plus days. Right. And I was right. like, oh my god, like it just sounds like daggers to my ears. You know, I'm like, ugh, I don't like that at all. Like that just doesn't work for me. But the nice thing today is we have so many different tools in the studio where it's like, okay, I think I've kind of figured out how to do some things to make my voice more of an instrument and manipulate it in a way that like, okay, I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, you know, like, um, I really like doing like vocal synth and I like adding, you know, some, some kind of crazy effects and doing some things to make it more of an instrument um, to complement the music rather than be like front and center. And that's kind of what, like, even with the mixes, like that's one thing that I've had to establish right off the bat is like, don't put my voice on top. Right. That's not what this music is. This music is bass and drum music. Well, it seems it's like, supposed to be. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt like, you, but it seems like no, you, uh, you did. There was one song, and I can't remember which one it was that had you sang a really cool harmony through almost the whole thing. Yeah. With another. Oh, vultures. Yes, yeah, yeah, vultures. Yeah. 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 Um, man, and that's really like I, I, the thing, the thing with this project, um, which I'm doing with Alan, by the way. Yeah. Alan. Alan's- Alan's- my my uh, hetero life mate on this um it it's it's very much about the music beds and very much about the lyrics and not that the melodies aren't important but it's not like it's not it's not supposed to be the typical like here's your super strong chorus melody you know it's more about the message and it's more like it, honestly like it kind i it, i'm trying to kind of go back to the and i don't mean to sound like a super fan because i just said perry a minute ago but the jane's addiction model a little Uh bit which is like oh here's a memorable bass line right you know like how many bass players when in a sound check do you hear i'm going do 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 exactly exactly you know it's like so i want i want to kind of i want to kind of do that with this music and like okay let's start with like the signature hook is more of like the bass part or the drum part and then off that, the guitars, the keys, the vocals, those are all just kind of add to the big picture, you know. Um, but the lyrics, I'm very serious about. I'm yeah, very really serious. Good. The, uh, the song with heavy is uh, Aces. Oh, Aces. Heavy is yeah. The head that wears the crown line. All yeah. of that, that whole thing is great, like really Thank very you. poetic and, Thank you. and fantastic Apocalypse. lyrics. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, and, and, and I know that, like, um, you know, right now, obviously there's a lot to talk about there is you know like artists like us are are living in a really fractured like divided world and so there's a lot to talk about and um and so that song definitely lives lives in that world you know it's definitely i mean there's a statement there there's definitely i'm definitely expressing some some political beliefs there for sure you know but obviously i'm not the only person doing that right that now. was what i have a song i wrote with my friend gabriel rhodes and we recorded it and when i was listening to that song aces i was like it seems like people are like i i wrote a song that lyrically lives in the same world where yeah. it's almost like uh reading the paper kind of, it's it's difficult right I'm not like a I'm not like a so a socially conscious songwriter. I just write songs about myself and what people have done to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and, right. <laughs> right. And 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 I always felt kind of like disingenuous being like that because like some of my most prolific times were like in the nineties when there really mm. wasn't a lot to like stand up against. I mean, to me it seemed like everything yeah. was, was going pretty good for everyone. My that's really funny you say that. My it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before I got, got home from the studio that night and, and the, the debate was on. 
if you can call it a debate, it was on and it was just wrapping up. And my daughter, my daughter's 12. My daughter looks over at my wife and I, and she goes, who's your favorite president? Like, who's your favorite president of all time? Right, right. You know? And I gave her my answer. And then I said, but you know, the nineties were awesome. They were just awesome. Yeah. You know, like I know there was a little scandal there, but at the same time, like it just, I don't know, man, like we had this dude playing saxophone yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I don't know, man. It's just like well, every like it just wasn't there wasn't all this friction, man. There wasn't all this shit that's happening. He right was now. a person that inspired young people too. You know, like yeah. that. That's a thing that I don't think that we have. The closest thing that was really inspiring to young people, and I'm I'm not as huge as fan either. But Bernie Sanders excited people, and people were inspired Absolutely. to to do something for him but like this is these the guys now are just not like you're not like all oh, right this guy it's just Yo, like, yeah, oh yeah man God. No. yeah what is yeah. there to be excited about you know it's it's uh yeah Ber- i mean lot. bernie is, um i you know i i don't know i could go on and on about, about it all day because i have some i guess like socialist leaning tendencies when it comes to certain things i'm not a socialist yeah me neither but i have but yeah. some, i have some socialist beliefs sure. from you know, leaning beliefs when it comes to things like healthcare and stuff like that. So like, to me, I can see why the young, the younger generation hears Bernie talk and they go, yeah, why isn't it that way? Yeah. 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 Why aren't we doing this? Right. Like, this doesn't make any sense. It's like when a little kid looks at you, you know, and they're like, well, why is this this way? Exactly. And then you stop and go, yeah. Shit, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So I, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, how do you, uh, your daughter's, uh, your daughter's 12. 12, so yeah. she's got school stuff. How has this been just like the whole, you know, since March in a parenting you know, it's, way? It's been interesting. Um, we, we have a pretty, uh, I think that we're in, in a pretty like unique situation though, where a lot of, you know, a lot of families these days, like, bo- you know, both parents have to have to provide income to make it work. And my wife and I have found this really, really great balance with the way that we do things where she has to take on a lot more responsibility with our kids because I'm working, I'm working a ton and the studio is so busy and I've got so much going on here, but she's so awesome about it. She's not, you know, there, there's no, that's not a bad thing. That's no, a good thing. Right. And so when, when, when the option of like, are you going to send your kids back to school or not came up, it was an obvious no for yeah. us yeah you know we don't we're not going to do that we don't need to and so my wife has become a teacher like she has like yeah. totally stepped into the role of like okay i am homeschooling both of our boys obviously avery is older and she's doing her stuff you know um a lot of it online with school and right. it's really hard for her though because she's like it, 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 the social aspect of it isn't too hard for her because she's it, it, she's kind of an extroverted introvert if that makes sense mm-hmm. um and or an introvert with extrovert tendencies sure. whatever it is um and she's kind of but she's also kind of like me in the sense that like she she her add kicks in a million times a day so she's on the zoom and it's like okay we're gonna do this and so i'm gonna leave you to your own devices to get it done and she's like okay great and then she's done with the zoom and she's like oh look a bicycle exactly. yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and then like it all just compiles and it becomes this like holy shit, there's this mountain of unfinished work. And she's like, there is, you know? Yeah. And so that's been really difficult. Like it's, just, I think it's for kids like her, it's really hard to just stay on top of it, man. Yeah. You know? It is. And I feel for her. We're doing the best we can, just like everybody else. You know? Yeah. Do you have to do a lot of explaining? Like, I mean, obviously she's old enough to know that there's protest. Does she ask why? Yeah. Um, We've talked a lot about it. Yeah. You know, that's one thing with her. And my boys are young enough that like. It, right. It There's like an yeah. age where like you just go like, hey, sorry. Yeah. Stuff's closed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, OK, whatever. Um, but with her, obviously, there's a lot of discussion and there's a lot of talk about. Um, and, you know, and I, and I, I it, it's it. The thing that I love about having a kid that's a preteen or, you know, basically a teenager at this point is like it, it reminds you of a lot of things that maybe that you've kind of taken for granted or a lot. It reminds you yourself of things that you every once in a while, you just need to say it out loud. Yeah. You know, like you need to have those conversations. You go, shit, man. Yeah. That, that is how it's supposed to be, you know, or like 
just life is what it is and you get distracted with all these million other things going on and you stop and think about well why like yeah. why is yeah. this this way what can i do to make a difference you know and so having a kid really is kind of like it's been great for me to just to reflect and it's been great for me to have these conversations with her and kind of remind myself of what's really important in life yeah and yeah. um but my but avery like blows my mind because she has such a great heart you know she's just such a Everybody that meets her for the first time is like, man, there's just something special about her. You know, she's just got this just amazing heart and this amazing personality. And so I'm super proud of her because of that. But I love having these adult conversations with her now. I love having this, this, you know, used to be this little kid, this little child. And now we're having these adult conversations and some of them are heavy. Yeah. Some of them are really heavy, man. When you have something like what we witnessed the other night, yeah, you know, and that's the, the president of the United States bullying and acting like a child, yeah, you know, and interrupting, like I read this morning, it was like 128 times or something they counted <laughs> in, in a fucking debate. You know, it's like, you, 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 you got to look over at your kid and they're just, you know, and you see the look on their face of disgust and confusion and you have to address that. You got to yeah. have a conversation about it. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it happens, man. There's yeah. a lot of talks about this. <laughs> so, so this obviously has affected your mindset and and writing these songs um yeah. when are these songs going to be available to the people the icarus bell by the oh, way oh man isn't that the magic question um a lot of that depends on how quickly i can get it done it's all on my shoulders at this point because I, like alan it's funny i love alan so much Me too, every I once in a while that that um well i'll get a text from every once in a while and it's like hey so <laughs> dot 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 <laughs> you know where are we at you know and i'm like i know i know um lyrically i'm, I'm making progress for sure uh but it really now it just kind of hinges on the vocals because i actually have 11 song beds oh wow that are like and and the two that the the two that you've heard the complete versions of are actually the most straightforward of the bunch like the rest of the songs are are a lot more uh you know, some of them are eight minutes and oh, wow. some of them have like crazy time signature changes and, you know, and a little more progressive. How I'd did say. you guys do this? How did you guys do this? Did you get together and jam and record it, the jams? Yeah. So so it was a combination of like I, I have if you look at my phone, which I imagine you have the same thing. Huh? I have about a million voice memos yeah. on my phone with different little titles like. I think that the number one, if you look at anybody's like computer demos, I think Funky Jam is probably the number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's so funny I that probably you say have that because like... I have one called Vicodin Jam that I, oh, I always there go you and go. listen to because I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I probably have a couple of those. Um, yeah, so I've got, you know, whatever, Funky Jam, Vicodin Jam. I yeah. got all these different, you know, <laughs> yeah. voice memos. But some of them are fucking cool, you know, so I go back and listen. I'm like, man, I got to do something with that riff, you know, and. And it's been nice because Alan and I are both, you know, we're 90s dudes, you yeah. know, we like Nine Inch Nails and Perfect Circle and all these other things that we grew up on that we like that we haven't been able to really, you know, um, work on in a long time, like something totally in that vein. So he and I just got together just to write and just to work on some ideas. And I had a bunch of voice memo ideas. He had some voice memo ideas. We got together and then we wound up just jamming and basically in our B room at the studio, and uh, the engine, my engineer, Victor, was just happened to be there. And he was like, man, that's really cool. Let me set up some mics and just demo for you guys. Yeah. Now yeah. he's producing it with us. Oh, wow. Now that's he's great. There with us. It just turned into this organic thing where it's like, this sounds really fucking cool. Let's record another one. Let's do another one. And throughout the process, Alan and I, you know, we didn't go into it with the intention that it was just going to be the two of us the whole way through. Right. But it just kind of right. turned out that way. Now, we've worked with other writers. Right. Um, right. We brought Lucas Rossi came in uh -huh. for three days and wrote with us, and he's he's great. Um, Paco, we've written with a bunch. Uh, Kat's come and written with us. Randy from Big Stories written with us. He came down from Dallas a couple of times. It's been a lot of fun, man. It's like just working with different people yeah, and yeah. getting some cameos on the songs. And But it's... um it's it's just been nice because having the studio and then when the, everything got shut down we were like okay well there's nothing going on at the studio for a month and a half like i'm totally isolated you're totally isolated let's we're go not, we're not we have no communication with anybody yeah let's let's just be creative you know and so we spent a good month and a half getting all those song beds together god that's great and yeah and so it wound up just being a really like it kept us busy, you know, kept our minds working for yeah. sure. 
I would be yeah. remiss if I if I didn't mention how great Alan sounds on, on man. that too, man. Yeah. Like he's just fucking great. Yeah, he he uh, and he kind of took a break from playing for a while. You That's, know, so yeah. I remember talking to him like, a couple. I was talking to him a couple of years ago, and he was like, "Yeah, I want to do something, but I gotta like I gotta practice and get back in shape." And but when I when you sent me this stuff and I started listening to it, I was like, "Jeez, he's fine." Like there's yeah. no oh, great. Yeah. 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 He um he, he it's funny, he did a session for me a, a while back and and <laughs> he was on like the third take. And he came in, he's like, Oh man, I'm really tired. <laughs> and I was like, bro, no. Yeah, <laughs> like we're just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that was kind of like he he was, you know, that was a funny moment because it was like, shit, I'm kind of out of shape. But he, uh, man, he went and he built this basically drum room in his garage, like this whole like soundproof, basically just box with AC. And he just rehearsed for a couple months and really got his chops back and like really like just really like dove back into his craft, man. Yeah. You know, the thing that makes you happy. Right. And he and so by the time we started putting these songs together, he was in good shape for sure. And he's done some really cool shit. Yeah. Like there's some um, there's some cool drum moments on these songs for sure. I'm excited yeah. about it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing the uh the rest of them. So this this Thanks, there's man. no there's no release date at all for this stuff. You're just kind of There's not a release date as far as the album goes, but I will say this. We ju- we released Vultures to our Patreon members okay. only. A uh, lyric video, but we're actually going to put this actual song out very soon. And Aces, we shot just a, a very basic performance video for it, but it looks great. I should actually have that in hand in the next few days. So I think we're probably going to put that out in a couple weeks. Awesome. So we're going to start putting singles out with it like this month. Are you So what's your Patreon? Is it Icarus Bell? Um. Do you, or, really I bet question. if they look up Icarus Bell, they could find it. I just didn't. Yeah, I mean, it, the nice thing about Icarus Bell is there's no other Icarus Bell of any kind out there at all. Like, nope. so our our Icarus Bell officials, our Instagram, um, I believe Icarus Bell official is the website. If okay. not, yeah, Google Icarus Bell. That's all you're going to find is us. You know, but our Patreon. If you go to our website, there's info on there about Patreon. If you go to the homepage of the website, it you know it'll 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 give you some direction for sure. Yeah, better um, than me. Who who produced the "This Is What I Live For" the new Blue October album? Was it you guys, Justin? Justin, Justin actually, yeah. So the last two albums we've done totally like on our own, but we've we've built this really cool chemistry with Eric Holtz. Uh, Eric is the engineer who's engineered the last couple of records, and e- Eric has developed into a role of from just engineering to co-producing. To actually writing as well, oh, wow. so he's Great. he's wow. co-written some of the songs on this last record. Eric's a phenomenal multi instrumentalist, um, but he he's been with us since Sway, like back in 2013. But he was a student at in the audio program at UT, okay, and he worked on that record. He assisted on that record, and he's just very like over the years has really kind of grown in this relationship with the band, where he's like another member of the band, basically. Wow, and um, and so Justin has his own studio now, and Eric is his guy. He's his right hand man at the studio, you know. So he does everything there. So they're together all the time, you That's know. Awesome. So Eric's able to, like like to really kind of decipher all of Justin's uh, language. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like some of us, you know, like we have our own language. Yeah, like, yeah. Put more, yeah. put more shimmer on this. Right, right. You know, put more <laughs> whatever. You know. And some engineers just look at you like, what do you, what do you mean? Yeah, you know, what are you talking about? Eric gets it. You know, yeah. he knows what what he's saying. You know, so he like he, they have this really cool chemistry, and it's it's turned into something pretty special, honestly. But but the last couple records are the like uh, not this one, but I hope you're happy was the first album that we did not bring in a producer for an outside producer, and it worked out great. It went it went really well. You know, it's like we don't. I feel like at this point in our career, like it's good to get some outside opinions. Yeah. But as far as day to day goes, it's easier to just do it ourselves. Sure. You know? So, and we did the same thing with this record. Super proud of it. That's awesome. And Tim Palmer yeah. makes the one from 2013, right? Sway. Yeah, Tim's mixed a lot of music for us, actually. Yeah, yeah. he he mixed Sway. Um, he did some production. He uh, he did uh, he produced the album before that. Um, he produced the album after that. Home, right? Um, co-produced, I should say, with Justin. Uh, 
Tim, I actually was just talking with Tim this morning, funny enough. Uh, Tim is my, and I love so many different people that we've worked with over the years, Nick Launay and Dave Castell, Steve Lillywhite, like some great producers, some great guys. But Tim, I just have this bond with Tim, you know, just this, there's just this thing where it's like, you know that he's not going to bullshit you about anything. Yeah. But he's yeah. also a very nurturing, kind, caring guy. Very much so. so. working very with him so. is a different thing, you know? And um, I don't know. Like, I feel like Tim is like, I, I don't know. He's kind of that. You just know that he's always in your corner, no matter what. And you know that he's going to tell you the truth. And, you know, he's going to be super straight with you, even if it breaks your fucking heart. Yeah. But he's going to yeah. do it. And I love that about him. Yeah. And he's just my favorite, man. He's my absolute favorite. Yeah, he's a fabulous dude. Are you uh, yeah. are you still a Black Fret mentor? Yeah, um, it, it's right now. It's kind of tough just because you know everything is Zoom sure. and yeah. kind of hands off, and there aren't a bunch of shows. You know, there's not the house shows that there were. Uh, they are doing a virtual series, which is really cool. I've um, seen but that. Yeah, yeah. That's not, it's, it's something I I, I definitely uh, I care about. You know. Um, uh, I wish I could do more hands-on stuff. I, funny enough, I plan on doing that this year. I actually reached out to Matt and Colin. I was like, "Hey, I've got some, you know, between right. tours ways so <laughs> I'm able to do some stuff." And then everything just, you know, um, but but Black Fred is it's one of those things where like when you tell somebody from like Chicago right. or New York right. and you tell them about it, they're like, "Wait, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what? Like, yeah. how is that even possible? Yeah. Like, how does that actually exist?" And it's one of those things where it's like we're so it's so badass. It's so cool that we have something like that here in Austin. Yeah. You know, so yeah. as involved as I can be, I will, you know, I'll stay as involved as I can. I'm just glad that they, they kind of let me come and go as I can, you know, that's good. That's a good, uh, I think that's good for uh, like, you don't want to be like a guy that works at a place. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Like one of those kind of guys, an office guy. Yeah. Um, definitely not an office guy. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. <laughs> That's not in the cards for us. Um, what all do you guys have planned for the release of, uh, of this is what I live for? Um, so it's actually coming out at the end of this month, right? The 23rd. Um, yeah, yeah. And so today we're doing 23 days. We're doing a song challenge on Instagram. Uh -huh. And so we're inviting everybody to, to hop on and put on their story, like basically to fill in the blanks with this calendar that we just posted on Instagram. It's actually really cool. It's really fun. So we're doing the song challenge with all of our fans starting today. Um, I'll actually post mine probably when we're, when we're, when we're done here. So today's the first day of that. Um, and that's kind of, I mean, like really it's a lot of interaction with the fans. It's not like a bunch of like doing a radio promo tour and blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, our single, Oh my, my actually went, it broke top 10, which is, that's awesome. Insane. That is you awesome. You know, like well, for a bunch of dudes in their forties, yeah. you know, like like mid to late forties, it's like okay, yeah, we'll take it. That's you amazing. Know, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so so that that is kind of held 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 its ground, I guess. You know, um, but on our own, like we're just really trying to stay in, involved, like one on one through social media with our fans. Justin does a ton of meet and greets. He does a lot of Zoom meet and greets with people. He actually taught, like, just has conversations with people. And to me, that's as organic as it gets, you know. That, as a person that's watched you guys, and you've you've done these huge, there have been these huge moments of your career. Yeah. But it's always been uh, beyond giant radio, beyond giant record sales, beyond any of that shit. To me, with with your band, and it and it's it's very prevalent in the documentary that. There's uh there's also another documentary from before that involves the fans more. What was that one called? Yes, um that was the that came out a while back. Um uh, argue with the tree. Right, right. And right, so right. that was a combination of the live concert, concert and, and the that fans and the right. Yeah. But it was yeah. that it was that fan interaction in yeah. in that film and just sort of like that that to me is what your band's legacy is is to make people feel okay and connect with them on that level, which I, it's pretty much yeah. one of the most beautiful things you can do with art. I mean, it Man, pretty much I, is the most beautiful thing you can do with art. It is, you know, I, I've, I, I was just having this conversation actually uh, recently, like I've been, and a lot of it is because of the pandemic and having a lot of reflection time. Like I've been thinking just a lot about not, not just the, the benchmarks that you set for yourself as exactly. an artist or, right. or as a musician, 
not just those benchmarks, not just those goals. Like, okay, well, here, like now I have a single coming out yeah. and here's the date and blah, 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 blah. But I've been thinking big picture and like, well, why do we make music? Why? Why do you write songs? You know, like, what's the purpose? Not how or when or where, but why? And I think that the common answer there, as basic as it is, is actually very profound. And it's to help people. It's not to be a star. It's not, you know, do you make music to, because I want to be a badass or I want to be huge. You're like, those are not the right answers. You know, yeah. the right yeah. answer and the most common answer with those of us who've been doing it a long time is to help people. Yeah. You make music to help people. Yeah. Plain yeah. and simple. That's it. Right. Yeah. You know, to connect with people and to help people. And I think that we have very clearly worn our heart on our sleeve as a band and carried that torch without trying to be cool for a long time. Yeah. And I think that finally that's caught up to us. Yeah. I think there was a period of time where we were very misunderstood. A lot of people thought that we were just whiny, you know, and, uh, and we had our whiny moments for we, sure. We have, we, yeah. You yeah. know, we had a couple of records. You, you listen back and you're like, yeah, you know, maybe that song missed the mark a little bit or whatever it was, you know, but like, I feel like the last three or four albums, we really found our footing and we really found our sound and we, we embraced our influences like the cure and slow dive and lush and all these other bands that we grew up loving mm -hmm. and try and stop trying to fit in, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think that everything came full circle and people's people started to come around. People started to go, you know what? These guys aren't just a bunch of whiny bitches. You know, it's not like there is a message here, yeah. you know, and when you yeah. go to a show, that's when you really feel it. That's when it really becomes obvious. Like the message becomes crystal clear is when you're at a show and you go and you look at the people in the crowd and you look at Justin and you look at the band and all and all of a sudden it just fucking clicks. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you're like, man, people are here because they want to they want to connect. They want to feel better. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's it. And he's really done an amazing job of personally, like, sacrificing whatever private <laughs> fucking shit about his feelings he was <laughs> trying to keep quiet or anything. I mean, it's like literally his heart is on his sleeve, and that's that's what people identify with. And it's always been that way. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not show business. No. You know, it's like you look at some, I mean, even some of my favorite artists who are very, very intelligent, very smart about their brand, you know, like, I mean, I look at an artist like Marilyn Manson and I have, I have a ton of respect for Marilyn Manson. Yeah. Like, I, I just think that I think he's absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, but a lot of that's very calculated. And a lot of that is there, there's a, there's a, um, there's a method. Yeah. There's a formula, yeah. Yeah. you know, there's zero formula to blow October. No, there is not, and that's the truth. There is not a formula. It is not calculated. It's not premeditated. It's not like, hey, let's do this, this, or this. It is very much like I am in hell. I'm going through a custody battle, or right. whatever it is, yeah. or I'm in a wonderful place in my life, yeah. and it's where I'm at, and I've beaten addiction, or whatever it yeah. is. Like, it's always been honest the whole way, whether you appreciate the message or not, or you relate to it or not. Right, and at this yeah. point, the band has been around for over 20 years oh god 25 25 something like well that. i mean the thing is is you've <laughs> actually you have an audience that grew up with you as people and they had kids, kids when you guys yeah. had kids yeah they you it's, know and a lot of those people you know you think back to like when we would first go to omaha and it was like the same 30 people that always show up right like they're still coming man they're yeah. still there and now they got kids you know and some of them have grandkids and so you know it's like it's just it's uh it's awesome, man. It's beautiful. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It, it really, really is. is you know? Yeah. And I miss yeah. it. I fucking miss it, man. I, know. I miss it. I, know. I, miss, I miss going out there and experiencing that part of it, you know? Yeah. I do. I noticed that connection doing those. Uh, we're just doing live streams for like a month at a time and doing a weekly thing whenever I, w I go to stop and it's the last one. You get messages from people that are like, this is kind of like the thing that I do on Thursdays yeah. that makes my week, you know lift up in a certain way and you realize we have this responsibility to humanity to uh, yeah I, I i agree 100 percent. you know and it's it's also i i've never been 
I've always really enjoyed doing um, doing events, and I've always really enjoyed going and, and doing things like Black Fred or speaking at TRCOA or doing any anything where I can just communicate and talk to people and have great conversations. I've always been a big fan of that, but I'm, I've also never been a big social media person. Right. So I've never been a big like, hey, this is what I'm doing today. Like right, I'm right. going live on Instagram. That's just not something that really even occurs to me, I guess. Right. Um, but when we did our first full band live stream, it, it, it definitely clicked. I went, okay, it's it's like it or not, this is this is what we have now. Yes, this yes. is the way it is right now, and it's 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 not that live music isn't going to come back because it will come back, but this is now ingrained in us. This is now a part of our DNA, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Even yeah. even if you know next summer festivals are happening again. These live streams are a part of our life yep. and people have, have become very aware of it now and people enjoy it and people realize that it's something that you can do and it's, you know, it's a different animal altogether, but it's, it's, it's going to happen. It's yeah. that's the way it is. But I also really realized that like I, it, what I thought would be super weird and awkward about it was not. Yeah. I, I mean, and some people are like, how is that? Like, what's it like playing into a room with nobody there? And right. it's like, man, it's actually awesome. <laughs> it's actually really amazing you know like the the show itself feels very much just like a live show wherever spokane chicago right. new york it's the same thing it just feels like that it has that same energy you know because we're up there together playing playing our songs and that's what matters but then like the things that i miss about the road are all the other things you know like the just just waking up and having breakfast with with tim or sound guy yeah you know like it's somewhere that we were at the year before or whatever it is you know getting just to see little... getting to see will Knack's hair every day oh my gosh that beautiful man he sleeps in the bunk right below me and he's he always a... smells so good i yeah you see yeah he's that that guy's he's all talent super sweet and he's a dad now too he is man um that nova uh his daughter i get the biggest smiles every time man like that's, that's awesome that's She's my little buddy. I get just get these huge smiles every time I see her. That's She's awesome. so beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he's what, a, part of the club. what a great camaraderie. Uh, what a great group of, you know, I know that those yeah. things, you guys were able to hold it together. Yeah, man. It's, it's been, you know, just like anything, you got a band yeah, man. 25 years, you know, it's like, it's like being married to, to four different dudes. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, you yeah, know, if you, if you handle it right, you, you can grow and keep on, you know, look at look at what's happening at this point. Like you guys are you have like a, a song that's that's in the charts, like going yeah. down. You did it yourself. You put it out yourself. We, you know, and a lot of that, I got to say, a lot of that is like we we've just been through so much shit together. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. we're like war buddies. You know, it's like we just have so many stories and we have so many things that we grew up through together Yeah, that yeah. you just have a bond that you just don't have with other people, you know, and like it's very special. It's a family. It really is like we 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 are just way more than a band. It's not about business for us. We've played shows with other bands w that are very well known. And you're like, oh my god, this is exciting! And then you see behind the scenes, they don't even talk to each other. They don't yeah. have anything to do with each other. And it's like, oh, really? Yeah, that kind of blows. Yeah. I'm yeah. so glad that's not yeah. my life, you yeah. know. Um, and it's not like that for us. And it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I, I I'm super grateful. And and I just, I mean, I, I, it's really crazy to think that it's been this long and that we're still doing it, and we're still doing it in a way that doesn't feel dated and tired and weird. No, you guys are growing still. You're still. That's the funniest thing about this business, and it's something that older people used to tell me when I was younger that I just didn't understand until I got older. Which is like, there's this, uh, there's this pristine era, like the kids that you're working for, fifteen to like twenty five. You are gold like you're so yeah. happening and some people yeah. have fucking magic when they do that like you know guns and roses yeah. like appetite for destruction of uh, you know Def leopard pyromania like all these records that were made by kids that have all this fucking piss and vinegar but the thing yeah. is is you actually get really good once you get older right <laughs> and yeah. people that yeah. really like uh, you're no longer <laughs> in that golden beautiful time you're like eh, yeah he's amazing now but he's old yeah, man, it's so true. You just become, you just practice your craft. You get yeah, better at your you just craft. Get better you at understand, it. understand things more. You process, you process things differently. You know, that's one thing is like, I, you know, and, and I have a, an interesting perspective on all that too because of the studio. Right. So I see so many people come and go and I get to meet so many different people that like, 
and we're not a genre specific studio at all. Like right. we've had, you know, from SZA and Bieber and, you know, Lil Wayne pentatonics to like holiday mountain and, you yeah, know, like just yeah. groups that like don't have anything in common with each other at right. all and everything in between. And so I've gotten to kind of have this like, you know, sort of behind the scenes, like look at everything. And, and I, and I really pick up on that. And one thing I pick up on is like, the, the people that you're scared of sometimes like, Oh, I'm scared to meet the beach boys or I'm scared to meet the, you know, cause they might break my heart. Right. Usually the people who've been doing it for a while are awesome. Yeah. They're yeah. usually super down to earth and super easy to talk to and very approachable and, and fun and cool. And I mean, we had Snoop Dogg here the other day oh, and no like way. my engineer no was way. like, man, he was amazing. He was so fucking cool. And, and it's the younger kids who have maybe had a little bit of taste of success who are usually the on the other end of that spectrum. Right, right. And, and in the back of your mind, all you can do is go, they'll come around. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, <laughs> or they, they'll get it at some point, <laughs> you know? Yeah. At some point they'll, they'll get over themselves. Yeah. You know, like, but yeah, ego is a funny thing. It is. For sure. yeah. It is. Well, man, um, dude, this has been great talking to you. I know you have a session coming up, but people can find the Icarus Bell on Patreon. They can go to IcarusBellOfficial.com. Uh, Blue October, you can find it at BlueOctober.com or Recording Studios or RecordingStudios.com. The new single, Oh My My, by Blue October is available now. And the record, This Is What I Live For, comes out on October 23rd. A lot you of, know more than I'll, I do. I'll put a lot of uh, I'll put links to all those those websites on there. But man, I'm very excited to uh, I'm very excited you guys are making this music, and it's great to talk to you, man. I, I do miss yeah, you a lot. You yeah, yeah, you too. You've always man. been a great a great dude. Thanks, Johnny. You yeah. too, man. And the work. Every, everybody loves Johnny. Everybody I talk to, you oh, know Johnny. Nice. They love you, man. Yeah. Well, they love Matt too. <laughs> Thanks, man. They do. I've never heard anybody say like that. Matt Noveski's a dick. You know, maybe in like 2002, yeah, it yeah, wouldn't yeah. surprise me oh, yeah. you heard that a couple times, but I like to think I've grown up a little bit since then. Well, what's there's a statute of limitations. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even want to talk about the Johnny in the 90s, but Johnny 2010s has, no. been, has been okay. Oh, I've known, I've known you for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I love you, man. And um, I'll let you know when all this goes up. And congratulations. And uh, people can get out there and find Orb Recording Studios at orbrecordingstudios.com. Book some time. Check it out. It's a beautiful studio. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. Great talking to you, man. Pleasure, buddy. It's fate to always play the fool. My old friend, Matt Noveski from Blue October, whose new album, This Is What I Live For, drops. October 23rd this year. Get out there. Check it out. Also, his new band, Icarus Bell. That's what you're hearing. You can find them at IcarusBellOfficial.com. You can find Blue October at BlueOctober.com. Find Orb Recording Studios at OrbRecordingStudios.com. Great talking to my old friend, Matt Noveski. What a great dude, man. Nice guy. Great songwriter. Great producer. Fear of management. <laughs> great dad. Great husband. And a great friend. All right, hey, don't forget when you're out there checking out all of these .coms, such as Blue October or Recording Studios and IcarusBellOfficial.com, don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts, be it Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Overcast, anywhere you find podcasts, new, new podcasts all the time. If you want to go back, check out some archives, you can always subscribe on the Podbean app. Yes, it's available on Podbean. You can, you can access every show ever released by How Did I Get Here on that way. All right, thank you so much for listening to the show. Let's hear some more music from my friend Matt Noveski's new band, Icarus Bell. Find them at IcarusBellOfficial.com. Don't forget Blue October's new album, This Is What I Live For, out October 23rd. Find them at BlueOctober.com. If you're interested in recording at Orb, at Orb Recording Studios, go to OrbRecordingStudios.com. Have a great day, whatever it is you're doing. Let's get down. Let's get down.